Hello, friends. Welcome to Page Chewing Comics and Manga. Or, Jesus Christ, I need to edit that out. <laughs> Nobody, my mind's on something else. Uh, <laughs> hello, friends. Uh, we are here today to discuss Beyond Redemption. We'll be reading Beyond Redemption, uh, 10 chapters at a time. And we are here for the first installment to discuss chapters 1 through 10. And I'm here with my friend Varsha. Varsha, thank you for coming along the ride. Yeah, this this was fun. I enjoyed reading uh, chapters that were 10 pages long. I've been reading a lot of books that have um, at the minimum of 50 page long chapters. <laughs> so this was a good change of pace. <laughs> yeah, it was, de- it was definitely a, a big change because, you know, I, I, know which, I know which series you're referring to. And it's like a chapter is like every, that's like a, ch- is like a, a day is a chapter. You kind of plan mm-hmm. like a all day. Yeah, yeah. This one, you're, you know, the, I, I think it kind of helps with the rhythm, mm. getting a rhythm when you're reading, or for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, me too. I think it's easier to think about three short chapters than it is about even one long 30 page chapter because I have to plan my entire reading shit. I can take time out of my day to just take a 10 minute break and finish a chapter so mm-hmm. that's nice yeah bite size and it's uh this is a reread for me this is this is your first time right it is my first time yes yeah it was uh it was picked up my old copy because it, it was i read it two and a half years ago i think and i had <laughs> some some tabs and i went through and i was i was looking at my old tabs and i didn't know what i was trying to tap back oh. then so <laughs> it's interesting but I was, I was going to ask, because it's a hit or a miss with uh, rereads and highlights. It's, why did I highlight that? <laughs> why was that, that was interesting me. to me then? <laughs> I was like, what, what did I, what was I trying to, re- like, why was I tapping this? It doesn't make yeah. any sense. <laughs> but I'm sure it made sense at the time. <laughs> but uh, this one, this I, I love this world. Um, mm-hmm. I love the the world building in this one. What did you think, what was your, what were your impressions? Yeah, the ideas were really interesting. The core ideas that uh, one delusions can come to life and I think um, a lot of the discussion around who makes gods whether gods make us or we make the gods I'm it is I think that kind of thing has bearing to our world even though it's a fantasy uh, world with a unique premise so yeah it, it, it is definitely interesting for sure I did. I did. There's a, a couple of themes here that I, I, I was kind of the whole. Like I think it's in uh, in the beginning. Uh, the more people believe something, the truer it, the truer it becomes. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. like you said, it's kind of ties into the into the our world, and also communication is manipulation. Yeah. So that one, uh, yeah, I'd like to discuss that bit. Um, that feels a bit too cynical or reductive to me (laughs) (laughs) i I wanted to get your thoughts on that because i I had forgotten about that but Mm -hmm. um i I guess from i guess for the for the insane in this world i guess it would i guess it could be because they Mm. almost like they because there was one um i'm gonna miss i'm gonna butcher everyone's name but get her uh, garen um it mentions that she was barely eating next to nothing but she was she's a you know she's a bigger on the big side physically and she's bigger not because she eats or because she's not active but because that's her like her projecting herself Mm -hmm. for everyone else yeah yeah i thought that was very interesting but she is really projecting her own sense of self is Mm -hmm. that also including manipulation i think saying that communication is manipulation is saying every piece of interaction that you have with anyone or anything in this world is manipulation. Isn't that what it boils down to? (laughs) Um, And and sure, these are a couple of characters' opinions, I think. In fact, I think it's specifically one character's opinion. So maybe it's not an aspect of the world, but I don't agree with that character. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit cynical. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It is. So I had a question for you. Um, what drew you enough about this to one, reread it, and also um, try to discuss this in detail? Well, the, I wanted to reread because the the third book is coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's what September. I think is mm-hmm. the is what Fletcher had said. So I wanted to kind of just like refresh my memory. And they're not big books, 
They're mm. not like massive tomes. And I think there's some really interesting, like, I love the world building mm-hmm. in this one. And I, I thought it'd be fun to go back, especially after reading so many other fantasy books and just kind of look at it from a different perspective after mm-hmm. reading so many other fantasy books and and just like re, you know, like re, re, revisiting this world and all the things that, that Fletcher does with it, like the, the delusions I always thought was really great. And yeah, um, yeah. I like how there's safeguards because there's, there are limits to someone because you think, okay, well, the most insane person will, will rule, mm-hmm. but there's, but they were, um, the, if they become like, uh, Koenig, he's, he's, a, a he's become a, a, he's learning how his doppels mm-hmm. and if he, they start to want to overthrow him. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's limits. You, there, mm-hmm. If you become too insane, then mm-hmm. you become a danger to yourself and everyone else. Yeah. 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 That, that was very interesting. Um, I saw in the in the author's note at the back, it says that um, yeah he brings his contemplation of rare mental disorders in mm-hmm. a fantasy context. I haven't looked up that specific disease, but um, it's interesting that that's the inspiration for the series, for the delusion aspect of it, perhaps. Hmm. Well, interesting. Yeah, we'll have to um, to look to look that up. Mm-hmm. It's um, Cotard's syndrome. That's the name of the disease, just for folks listening in. Let's see. We can find. Uh, also known as Cotard's delusion mm-hmm. or walking corpse syndrome is a rare mental disorder in which the affected person holds the delusion be- delusional belief that they are dead, do not exist, are purifying, or have lost their blood or internal organs. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. We haven't met anyone with that particular delusion yet, right? Not yet. Yeah. Mm. That is really interesting, though. I don't think I've ever heard of that before now. Mm. Yeah, that, that's really cool. <laughs> hey, Dan. <laughs> hey, uh, sorry about that. I had, like, an emergency at work, uh, oh. and I was completely forgot about it, <laughs> trying to fix it. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries, Dan. Glad you can make it. Yeah. Um, at what point of the discussions were you? <laughs> oh, we, we had just started. We were just discussing um, uh, in the back of the book. Fletcher mentions that or, uh, it's written that uh, this novel grew out of his desire to write something outside of the normal tropes of fantasy mm-hmm. and his contemplation of rare mental disorders like Cotard system or syndrome in a fantasy context. And the Cotard syndrome is. Uh, also known as uh, del- uh, Cotard's delusion or walking corpse syndrome, is a rare mental disorder in which the affected person holds the delusional belief that they are dead, do not exist, are purifying, or have lost their blood or internal organs. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> seems tough okay. yeah. to deal with. Yeah. No, I mean, I can just... see how that would, uh, yeah, would uh, be would not be out of place in this sort of book, I guess, mm. though. Yeah. 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 The uh, but no, we were just kind of just, like just barely the surface of the world and um, kind of like the the uh, the delusions and the whole system. But what were your thoughts on on that? Is and it's your it's your first time reading this one, right? First time, yeah. Um, and to be honest, I had no clue what it was about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only knew because people recommend it uh, when you ask for it. Oh, I want something very grim, dark. Um, you know, so I've seen the name a lot of a lot of places, but I didn't know what it was about. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's. I think it's really interesting. Uh, like I like the premise. Yeah. Far now. I mean, we've only started, so <laughs> I don't know where it's gonna go from here. Uh, but yeah. W- so you both read it before, right? No, it's my first time too. Steve's the reader. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I read it about two and a half years ago so it's been a little while Mm -hmm. Hmm. okay but i like the i like the premise for now i wonder if it's i hope it's going to be more than just like that one single thing you know um it's yeah it's just like for now it's just like oh there's this idea of the you know belief making reality Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the main difference from 
you know, any other fancy world, I guess, but everything else seems fairly, you know, fairly standard, I guess. So I wonder if it's everything is gonna, all the world building is gonna come from this one main core concept, or if there's gonna be other things going on too, apart from that. Mm. It's, I don't know. We were also discussing this line. I wanted to get your thoughts on it, Dan. The line was, mm -hmm. um, communication is manipulation. I like that. <laughs> it's very... I kind of think that you It feels like it could be from the Second Apocalypse books. It does, mm. yeah, Doesn't it does. It? Yeah, it does. It's, uh, yeah. I, I like it, this whole concept of, um, you know, belief begets uh, reality and how it translates to communication and how you talk to people and like maybe you don't believe it yourself but you make other people believe it um, mm. so if you don't believe really in it yourself does it like does it hurt the reality of it you know um, I don't know like because we have like the main protect like uh, not the main protagonist like the, the um, Again, I'm already forgetting the names. It's gonna take a while to remember the names, like the big priest guy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because oh, sometimes, yeah, he seems like he's sort of doubting a bit. He's like, oh, maybe, maybe what? What if it doesn't work? What if? Uh, but is that going to affect the chances of success? Or not really? It's more like how you behave and like if even if you if you act confidently you can trick mm -hmm. the delusions i don't know yeah it feels like he has to keep reminding himself to um believe what he needs to to bring about the reality right it, if you yeah. but the reminder serves as belief that what he wants can come true that is an interesting sort of circular relationship in your thoughts and beliefs yeah yeah because what if uh like this doubt is coming from let's say you know you have different levels of your ego and your um <laughs> you know conscious mind maybe it's coming you know deep down he knows that he has a lot of doubts but mm. is, maybe that doesn't um affect things mm. only like the the first level you know affects reality like the more conscious level so he can will himself to believe maybe i don't mm -hmm. know yeah and they also seem to be getting more powerful um uh, delusionists uh without really trying right that this feels like something that you could train and become more powerful at but both koenig and um the hasselbrand i forg i don't know how to say her name but they both are surprised at the increase in their power, mm -hmm. right? Um, or they are at least afraid of it. So what you said earlier, Steve, that there is a limit to how they can exercise their power. Um, there is, uh, and it, the limit is that they start hurting themselves, but also it doesn't seem to be that they increase it consciously. It happens without their trying, because th it makes sense that they would want to stop at some point and say this is how powerful i want to be so i don't hurt myself anymore but it feels almost like they can't help themselves so there is something external also besides the delusions or like two different forces in the head acting together so yeah it's interesting i like to see how that plays out yeah it seems like yeah i think i think Connick is mm -hmm. right on that limit right where he's starting to lose he's starting to become too powerful with his doppels you know, they're organizing a coup, trying to mm -hmm. trying to get rid of him. But I think he's he has to remind himself that he's um, kind of like not cross over that line and not lose control of his own delusions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I like yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Dan. The the hassle brand. <laughs> Hasselbrand also, I don't know if I'm saying her title correctly either, but um, she was surprised that she was able to burn people in her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so it, she didn't have an external manifestation of her delusions. Well, not in the same way that Koenig has, but she was, she also had something to be afraid of for how she could destroy 
more than she intends, potentially all the way down to herself with her delusions. Yeah, I, I like the the dream she had, and then she wakes up and and she's convinced <laughs> that the soup was poisoned. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, I told you the soup was poisoned. Everyone's like, you know, a pile of ash. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and she wasn't even doing herself favors, right? Like because of that, she had to uh subject herself to a great deal of misery. She could have gone like, she she could have traveled in style, I guess. But instead, <laughs> she had to subject herself to misery to get there on time. So yeah, she was deluded that they were after her and then she killed them and she hurt herself more. She is in many ways hurting herself the same way that Koenig seems to be. Hmm. Um, American Gods has, uh, it's not quite that you can create gods, but a god's as powerful as a number of believers who believe in them, which you could argue is very similar. And um, there is another series, but I think the discussion of it doesn't happen until late in the series. I don't know if it would be spoiler to <laughs> mention it. Um, but it this feels like um, a conversation we could have had like, in our world too, right? It's not strictly something from a book or, for instance, the fire god. Did we create the fire god? I, just the example in the book. Mm -hmm. um, we could argue that humans created <laughs> the gods of fire and not the other way around. So, it, yeah, it feels like a familiar mythology thing, but I, I couldn't pinpoint where I've read it exactly. I think a lot of the origin myths of gods have those too. Hmm. <laughs> We've already seen one failed coup. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, uh, Connick's plan, or is it Connick? His plan to not only make Morgan a god, but also to kill him himself to make him a slave in the afterlife, in the what is it, the after death? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Egyptian culture does have that slaves. Yeah, it looks like ancient Egyptian retainer sacrifices um, mm. is a type of human sacrifice Human sacrifice in which pharaohs and occasionally other high court nobility would have servants killed after the pharaoh's deaths to continue to serve them in the afterlife. Mm. That's brutal. I thought, I thought this one, in this world, it was that whoever you kill will serve you in mm -hmm. the after death, right? Yeah. So not necessarily slaves. In fact, if you did have slaves, if you didn't kill them yourself, they might not serve you in the after death, it sounds like. So, but yeah, the concept of having slaves in the after death <laughs> is interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. There were statements in the book that um, I think conversations between characters in it, the Hasselbrand, I think, whoever's talking to her, she says, I don't know their names. How will they serve me in the after death? And whoever's talking to her, uh, which person we don't know yet, um, they tell her they will if you believe it. it right? Something to that effect. Hmm. And I think uh, Connick is even, is even curious as to if he poisons Morgan, if it'll still count mm, as, yeah, as a yeah. death. Yeah. And then concludes that if he believes it, it, it does or some, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, interesting circular dependencies in this mm. world. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the only free people are those who die in their sleep. <laughs> mm, yeah. It seemed partially embedded is what I read it as. I don't know, Steve, do you know more? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of saw it as just like there's shards of glass everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, kind of like it's just um, it, even I think there's even some in her fingers, right? Or that mm -hmm. were in her face, yeah. too. 
Uh, what did you What did you guys think of the other the other trio? Um, I'm going to butcher their names too. But is it uh, Stalin? Is it Stalin? Stalin. 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 Sounds Stalin. right. <laughs> yeah. I, don't uh, know, I was saying Stalin in my head, I suppose. And the greatest swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's also with the wonderful opinion about uh, communication being manipulation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So far. Yeah. Seems to work. And oh, I had a question about this at some point. Let me see if I can find my notes. But uh, there was again that circular aspect of the becoming the greatest swordsman that I don't remember what my point of discussion was there. I'll see if I can remember it. <laughs> mm. yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. That that was interesting because then like he knows he's not the greatest and <laughs> mm. And yeah. that's Koenig's uh, purpose. <laughs> well, I think, uh, was it uh, Garen? Garen believed, you know, she projected her physical image on everyone else because she was thin and she projects herself as being a little portly. So maybe you can make other people believe things if you project enough. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. 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 So there manipulating other people even to believe things that they don't that makes mm. sense yeah, he does seem to be actually defeating people so maybe he does use some manipulation or maybe he, like you said he's just good with the sword <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. we don't think that Bidek and Stellan have any delusionary powers, right? Not yet, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, d I did like when, when Stellan kills all the priests. Yeah. <laughs> she comes back and she like has to explain that she killed everyone. <laughs> that was funny. That interaction was funny. And yeah. That <laughs> so, um... I, I, I'm yet to form an opinion on Stellan, but I like that she's like, screw that, I'm going in through the front door and killing everyone I see. And then she comes back out and then puts her clothes down and says, nope, I gotta kill even more people. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Rift War or Prince of Nothing? Yeah. <laughs> I think it might have been Prince of Nothing now that she mentioned that. I think... It was based off campaign that he Baker did with his brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It seems Bidek and Stalin on, um, or that trio isn't too familiar with all the delusion what uh, powers because they didn't think that a mirrorist could just give up their location and identity. It's almost it's almost like a heist on the side. It's almost like this. These three are like on a. It's almost turning into like a, a black humor heist mm -hmm. subplot. Yeah. What did you both think about the descriptions of uh, Bidek and Stellan? <laughs> they induced a lot of disgust in me, which, you know, I didn't enjoy reading about it, but job well done by the author, I think, because I think that's what they were going for. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So more than the physical aspects it was you know the lack of cleanliness i guess like we got to hear about bidex not several times and to the point where i started to think i had a cold <laughs> and and, and um uh, uh the hasselbrand's view of stellan she goes yeah. on about how matted and dirty her hair is and apparently she likes that sort of thing but but the descriptions were <laughs> <laughs> not nice to read about so i think yeah it is clear that they're all described as being ugly but also their lack of cleanliness is interesting um yeah it's effective yeah, 
but yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even I didn't even think of that until you mentioned it about that they're all. I don't think there's anyone who's it's attractive. No. <laughs> and uh, attractive is in this world how uh, unclean and dirty they are apparently because that's what uh, what I should stop calling her the hassle brand. What's her name? Ge uh, Garen. 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 Yeah, she likes that about her. So she's attracted to Stellan for those reasons and her quiet efficiency in killing people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And you wonder because they are projecting themselves. Well, some of them are. The ones who are able are projecting themselves. So you wonder if that's. You wonder why they wouldn't project themselves as being attractive or being physically appealing mm -hmm. when they could, but they don't. Maybe. Maybe in this world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The opening scene has a dirtyish city with people dark eyes um looking in through i guess dilapidated windows looking out sorry um yeah i i don't usually build a lot of pictures in my head it's very vague shapes if that i think for this world it's just dark gray <laughs> that's that's the Im image i have of what everyone is mostly shadows and grayness and lack of light is what i visualize in as much as what whether you can call what I do is visualize is <laughs> arguable but that that's what I'm that's what I think of for some reason all the buildings are blackish even from the exterior <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah it's interesting very hmm. I kind of mm. see it like as a as a like a like a medieval wild west almost I guess from the the, mm. the trio uh kind of the these like like a waistline like you like you mentioned but. but you wonder where the gods went though right mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Uh, did they were did people stop believing in them so they lost power but that oh. it doesn't quite seem to be all that can happen in this world there's probably more to it the yeah I, I think the prologue I'm intrigued but I don't fully understand it yet yeah 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 it it does say the twisted fears of the old gods wormed themselves into this creation and became real. Their darkest thoughts took on life. Yeah. <laughs> and then they started imagining things. It yeah, and it says dreams became nightmares, nightmares became reality, stalking the earth as I don't know that word, Alptrum. Manifestations of man's earliest fears given flesh. <laughs> And the cycle continues. <laughs> mm. So it, it describes sort of descent into insanity, doesn't it? Really good prologue, too. I forgot how good it's yeah. very, it's what is like a third of a page or like three quarters of a page, but it pretty much yeah. sets everything up for you pretty good going into mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. What's the yeah. thread in the story? I mean, it is all converging on Morgan, but is there a particular character or thread that both of you are more interested in than the others? Hmm. Good question. What about you, Dan? Oh, um, but uh, I haven't read it yet. Oh man, I can't believe I'm forgetting Blocked his name. Doctor. Doctor. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> what about you, Steve? Well, Koenig is one of the 
one of the more interesting characters, I think, just because there's so much going on with him, and he's he's so determined. With he has a plan and he has a goal. He's determined. But I, I like uh, Ger- Gerin. I think mm. she's entertaining yeah. and dangerous and unpredictable and insane. And mm. uh, <laughs> so I, I think it's it's um, it's dark and disturbing, but it's also funny the way that it happens because she dreams of these things happening wakes up and is convinced it's the soup and it's it was her and she takes her a little bit to realize that she had killed everyone and she's still just you know i i can't disappoint conic i have to he Mm. believes in me i have to get this done so she's so determined but you get the feeling like her her time is you know if they do collapse into their own delusions and she's you know just like just like conic he's getting there to where his delusions are starting to become um, too powerful. Hmm. I wonder if that means something that uh, his acceptance in his own psyche has reduced somehow because he, his doppelganger has lost an eye or something. I'd be interested to see how that, what the implications are of acceptance's loss of an eye. <laughs> yeah. I think those are the two interesting threads for me too. I'm slightly more interested in Gehin than in uh, Koenig. Although for Koenig, I'd like to see, um, I'm predicting that we will see a successful coup. So I'm, I'm curious to see where that goes. And, and I want that Koenig to succeed <laughs> in, <laughs> in letting Morgan ascend. <laughs> that makes sense. Morgan's been pretty closeted so far. Um, mm-hmm. So if he does get stolen away and sees the world away from this uh, temple temple that they are in, I think he'll probably make a much different god than the one Koenig wants. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. In is Koenig deluding himself that Morgan will be the god he wants because he kind of has no choice left anymore <laughs> than to this he's his one chance left yeah I think they started with 10 and they all I think the last one killed but killed herself because mm-hmm. oh she uh, had messages in her blood I forget the message but when they came to inspect just like blood isn't a good way to convey <laughs> a message or something like that yeah yeah, the priestess was guessing about whether she meant that humans who ascend make poor gods or humans creating gods out of their delusions make poor gods. Either way, I think the bottom line is a human brain doesn't make a good god, uh, an ascended human. Um, yeah, that, I want to see what what the implications are of what she meant like that must mean something she had some vision or something that uh, made her write that apparently Hmm. so i didn't fully understand what koenig's powers are he's got the same uh delusion as um the greatest swordsman right except a much more powerful version of it but is that what resulted in the creation of the doppels or is that a separate delusion and then also the mirrorous delusion is a third thing that he has I think that's a delusion because uh, the greatest swordsman he seems to be the only one at least so far who has been revealed to us to ha- to be delusional and this is the delusion he has uh, the one of manipulation and he has dead eyes or something by which we know <laughs> yeah, <Sure>. yeah, <laughs> getting people to follow him, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I, I was curious whether the doppels resulted from that delusion getting extremely powerful, or if he has three delusions instead of just. So the mirrorist one is separate. We know that because someone, mm-hmm. uh, the scientist. We should talk about him. Uh, the scientist uh, realizes that when he sees the mirrors, mirror images, that uh, this guy is becoming multi-delusional. But he was already aware of the doppels. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That was funny. Yeah. 
So what did you guys think of the scientist and your opinions there? Yeah, I wondered if she was the priest that uh, Stalin followed and killed. I think so. Oh. I was that? thought she was a priestess. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry. I got, little, I, got, no, I, was, I got a little bit confused there too because I think that's where Girin had had come into the temple and that's when she met Stellid, right? She didn't meet Stellan. I thought she was shown Stellan um, through the mirrorist's uh, vision of the past. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was a little confused in that part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think um, projected himself in the, in the other person to get there faster. I think it was like within the day, but it was like, like possessed someone else's body to do it. Yeah, I don't think we know for sure. I thought my best guess about where she was at is that she was the priestess who went and talked to the trio in the bar but um, I mean there's nothing to indicate one way or the other she could just be one of the people who died or she could have been outside the temple another silly observation I have is that um, so Gehen went went inside the temple and then she fell asleep I guess all the dead people were still there, even though they were discovered days ago. Nobody thought to take them out, <laughs> bury them, do anything with them. <laughs> They're just still there, and the priestess went to sleep there. <laughs> I wonder if there are any necromancy delusions uh, bringing mm. the dead back to life and things like that. I think it's... Um, oh, yeah, it's called the Old Kingdom or something. Yeah, the first... Yeah. The first book is called Seb Sabriel, or Sabriel, I don't <laughs> I've heard it pronounced so many different ways, but it's by Garth Nix, and it mm. is a very interesting world. Uh, the first one was okay, but I loved Lirel's character, and she's in the second two books, so. Mm. I read these as an adult. I read them three or four years ago. Really liked them. And uh, Varsha? Yeah, my uh, YouTube channel called Reading by the Rainy Mountain, and I hang out quite a bit on the page showing forum. <laughs> nice. Yeah, going to be a, a fun uh, fun read. I'm glad both of you yeah. decided to take the journey. Yeah, it's been pretty fun so yeah. far. I don't think it's the kind of thing that I would have picked up by myself. Um, so mm. this is cool to read with um, folks to discuss. Yeah, I think it's a good one. It's lot, lots of things to to talk about I think. Mm -hmm. interesting world at least yeah yeah cool well we'll see everyone uh, next week for chapters 11 through 20 yes yeah, yeah or we can do more we, we, we can talk about it but yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs>